Hey everybody! So I got a question from a viewer, and the viewer asked how to get people to stop interrupting her. And so I thought, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to do a live video because I don't do enough live. And uh, Maggie thought she would join us. Everybody say hi to Maggie. Hey, Megs. <laughs> so here it is. How to get people to stop interrupting you. Are you ready? Okay. First of all, remember, we train people how to treat us. And people communicate with us the way we allow them to communicate with us and the way we train them to communicate with us. What we want to do is make sure to check our pattern. You know, are we allowing people to interrupt us? And are we doing the top things that people should not do when people try to interrupt us? Before I talk about specifically what to do, I want to talk about what not to do. Okay, so hi guys, hey viewers. <laughs> specifically, what is the number one thing that people do that is incorrect when others try to interrupt them? What are the top things that people say? That's right, people, people tend to say, Number one, excuse me, or uh, pardon me, or I'm sorry. Don't do that. Do not do that. When somebody tries to interrupt us and take the floor from us, now, I got to put a little caveat here. My nephew, for example, God bless him, amen. God bless you, amen. He gets so excited and so eager to participate in our conversation that sometimes he has the tendency to start speaking before I have finished. That's not to disrespect me or to be rude or anything. That's because he is enjoying our conversation so much. When people do that, I tend to be a little bit more patient, and I hope you do too, because they just haven't really, you know, gotten, they, they, they aren't fully cooked yet in terms of the communication oven. They have a little bit to go. However, if you're in a meeting, or if you find it to be a pattern at work that people are interrupting you because they no longer respect what you have to say, or they think that it's okay to interrupt you, that is a problem. So remember, by the way, if you have a problem with that, <laughs> you know, with interrupting other people, habit number five from the seven habits of highly effective people is seek first to understand and then to be understood. And I love that habit because when I listen to you with the intention of understanding what it is that you have to say, it's a way of showing you great love and honoring you and respecting you. And people know that, you know what I mean? You feel it when people are actually listening to you with the intention not to tell you how wrong you are when you're finished. So I'm, you know, gathering information for that reason or not to help fix your problem, but I'm simply listening to understand you. When I do that, people feel that. And it is only then that I could, if I wanted to, effectively persuade you to go along with my way of thinking if that is what we're talking about. You know, if we're having a conversation where I'm trying to persuade you to go along to my way of thinking. It is only when I can articulate to you, to your satisfaction or better, whatever it is that is your point of view, that I have even a glimmer of hope of changing your point of view. So to most effectively do that, I'm going to listen to you with the intention of simply understanding. Having said that, let's talk about those people who try to interrupt us. Now, if you're like me, you love Judge Judy. You know, if you're a Judge Judy fan, <laughs> I love me some Judge Judy. She is the most precise communicator I have ever seen. When she communicates, you will never find her haphazardly plunking down words in her sentences. She has a specific structure that she uses, and each one of her words in each sentence is strategically designed to go wherever it has been placed. She's a very strategic communicator. Doesn't communicate necessarily with tact and finesse, but very effective at, for example, anti-interrupters. You know, you only try to interrupt Judge Judy once. So if you are watching Judge Judy, if you're a Judge Judy lover, if you make time for justice like I do, you'll notice that she engages this three-step process that I'm gonna give you now. So if you find people interrupting you, use this three-step process and you will find it no more because you will train them that you are not somebody to be interrupted. And this is a little bit aggressive. So when you do it, people might be like, oh geez, what's with you? But they will get the point right away. You're not one to be played with or interrupted, all right? Number one, when somebody tries to interrupt you, remember your body language. Number one, make direct eye contact. And you might even wanna lean into them, but face them, make direct eye contact, head straight forward, do not tilt your head to the side, okay? That's number one. Sometimes you'll notice that I tell you to not look at people or to look away from people or to give them a, a, a block. Not in this case, you're going to look right at them. Number two, 
as you give them a stop gesture. You know, I was just talking to Maggie. Hey, Mags. Hey, Mags. Maggie's in heat. Have you ever had a dog in heat? It's revolting. Buddy's on the other side of the door panting. And so in case you hear panting or heavy breathing on the other side of the door, it's just Buddy. <laughs> or maybe it's not. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> that's Mags. And it's funny how there are some universal signals, nonverbal signals, that are understood even interspecies. For example, a stop gesture. You know, I walk down the streets of Mexico, I'm a street walker sometimes in my spare time, and here, the, uh, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of street dogs, a lot, a lot, a lot. I wish I could save them all, but I can't. And when you go up to a dog on the street, I don't know if you've ever learned this, but you know, in the States, there aren't many stray dogs just wandering around, thankfully. Here, however, if you see a stray dog that comes up to you, some of them bite you, you know, some of them eat you. There have been people eaten by stray dogs. I don't know how that actually happens, but it's happened. You can stop a dog from approaching if you go, you know, you put up your hand and go, it works every time. I've never, I've never had that not work. The dog will stop and be like, okay, I was just coming up to say hello, goodbye. The same goes for people. There are universal stop gestures. That is one. You know, Judge Judy tends to use a karate chop. You know, when you try to interrupt her, she'll say, I'm speaking! You know, and people will be like, oh, okay, lady. Now, that's a little bit too aggressive, you know, to karate chop people. However, it works for her. So, number one, you look at somebody head on. You might want to lean in towards them. And if they're particularly aggressive, you might give them a forward nod, okay? Number two. Mmm. You give them a stop gesture. The universal stop gesture is that. Then you, number three, deliver an anti-interrupter statement. Now, the anti-interrupter statement is very simple. You know, what is the number one thing that people say when somebody tries to interrupt them? Yeah, excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm so, uh, if I could just finish. Do not ask for permission to finish. Do not apologize when somebody interrupts you. Instead, there are two things you know, if you want to communicate, I have not yet finished speaking, but when I do, you will have a chance and I will listen to what you have to say. That all can be conveyed with one thing. I'm speaking. Or here's your other option. This is option number two. I'm still speaking. Those are your two options when it comes to your anti-interrupter statements. Now, you might say, I'm talking, I'm still talking. I'm presenting, I'm still presenting. But that's it. All the rest of the stuff, like, when I'm finished, you'll have a chance, or if you could let me finish, then you'll have a chance to you know, state your point of view. All of that, you can figure that out by what I'm saying to you when I say, I'm speaking. And then you keep speaking without stopping. Now, that sounds very simple to say, I'm speaking, John. Now, the name that I threw in there, by the way, if you really, you know, if they, if they keep going at it, using somebody's name tends to get them to stop as well. So remember, tell people, I'm speaking, I'm still speaking. And then you keep speaking without missing a beat. So I'm just talking along and I'm giving a presentation and then somebody decides to start to steal the floor from me in a meeting. And so I will turn to them and say, I'm speaking. And then I keep speaking without stopping. Now, most people, by the way, will you know, be a little bit taken aback by that and be like, when did he get so aggressive? Let them, let them think, or actually let them, let them know Hmm, you can't mess with them the way I can with that person. Let them know that, that's okay. You know, I'm not doing that to my grandmother. You know, if my mother or my grandmother, you know, if my, if my mother, my mother, we'll talk about the living. If I say to my mother, you know, as I'm speaking, you know, if she interrupts me and I say to her, I'm speaking, you know, that's, I wouldn't recommend that. You know, we wanna do our cost benefit analysis first. You know, what am I gonna get out of this? What is the price that I'd have to pay? I would let my mother interrupt me because you know, under normal circumstances, she's going to be right when she's, you know, saying, hey, I can't take any more of this. We got to get the show on the road, get to the point, you know, what she's saying. That's okay. With a coworker trying to steal the floor for me, that is not okay. With my family members who have decided that I'm not quite as worthy as they are of having the opportunity to speak, that's not okay. Let people know. Remember, you train people how to treat you. Other people will treat you the way you allow them to, and that's it. We all know some people who other people don't interrupt. You know, I had a friend, <laughs> I still have a friend, he's alive, Israel, Macharlin. <laughs> and when he speaks, he speaks like this, he speaks very softly, 
and he speaks very slowly. And I can't ever understand what he's saying. And so the first time I met him, I'm like, could you talk louder? And he said, no, I can't talk any louder. And he kept speaking like that because turns out that he had a physical condition. He could not speak any louder. <laughs> Hi, Israel, one of my most beloved friends, by the way, and I love you. Uh, he taught me right away how to treat him. So now when he talks, I shut up and I listen. I'm like, okay, he can't speak any louder. He can't speak, you know, but that's because he lets people know. No, I can't speak any louder and I can't speak any more quickly and you're going to stop and listen to me until I'm finished, capiche? And we all do, because he trains us to do that. One last thing about this. If you have had the floor stolen from you, you know, you were caught off guard, it happens to the best of us, and somebody has now taken the floor and you need to steal it back, what do you do? You know, how do you effectively steal the floor or interrupt somebody else? Especially if they're what you call a steamroller. You know, a steamroller are those people who, you know, if, if you try to talk, they will try to talk over you. And then what do we tend to do? We try to talk over them and then they try to talk over us and we try to talk over them. And it turns out to be a big mess. Instead, instead of doing, instead of trying to talk over somebody, remember, what do our children do when they want to take the floor or interrupt us? You know, let's say that you tell your kids, hey, I'm going to be on the phone for a little while. I'm talking to my accountant, you know, I'm about to be audited. So shut up for a while and don't bother me. I'm going to be on the phone. That's what I'm, I'm just using the language I'm accustomed to from my mother. So they say, okay, yeah, what, what do I want to talk to you about anyway? And then after about two minutes, they think, oh, wait a minute, I do need something from you. So how do they get your attention? When your kids want to grab your attention, interrupt you, what do they do? You know? <laughs> Mom, 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 mom. And they think, oh, you're not paying attention to me? Okay. Mom, 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 mm, mm, mm. Mom, 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 mom. Until eventually, what do we do? We'll be like, what? And then they learn, ha, works every time. Because it's true, when we hear our own name, there's something about you know hearing our own name. Even if we know that somebody else is trying to use it, to take the floor from us or to interrupt us. There's something we can't help but respond to that and say, what? So if you need to interrupt somebody, you know, if somebody did take the floor from you, remember, John, 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 as I was saying, and then you transition into what you were saying without saying thank you or, you know, anything like that. Remember, there are rules to communication. Follow the rules and you will achieve the goal. It's, there are time-tested, and true rules. So follow them. And one of the rules is we train people how to treat us. Oh, there's Buddy. He's <laughs> telling me to shut up. And uh, the other rule is don't let people interrupt you. What you have to say is important. And when you listen to other people, seek to understand. And when you do that, you know, when you listen to people uh, with the intention of simply understanding them, it is only then that you have any chance of changing their view anyway, bringing them over to the light with you. Please keep leaving your questions or your comments. I will answer every single one of them since this is a live video, okay? From everybody here at Dana Connor Training, remember to subscribe, like, share this video, comment. Don't be a communication freeloader. This is Dan O'Connor <laughs> signing off. You guys are great. I appreciate it. I don't even know how to turn this thing off. <laughs> Let's see. Mm -hmm -hmm -hmm.